do you have any idea what is Splunk and uh, why do we use Splunk and why people are using Splunk? Like why it is very demanding in the market nowadays? Before we go for a practical session or you know in today's session I would be covering how to install Splunk and a few basic stuff how the GUI looks like and you know how to give the credential, how to change the password and all the navigation in Splunk. So uh, first few slides I'll be showing you what is Splunk, why do we use Splunk, why it is so much demanding in the market and the other overviews of Splunk, the architecture and all. So what is Splunk? Splunk latest version and OS support it. What does Splunk do? What does Splunk provide? Data sources, delivering operational intelligence and what are the topics to be covered. So what is Splunk? As you all know what is Google, right? Google is a search engine. Whatever we want to search, we just type in that small rectangular box and we get the result out of it, right? So Splunk is a kind of Google. But the basic difference is Splunk is only for you know uh, IT data, not for all the data in the world. And Google is all the data in the world. Now the thing is that Splunk. So in one way we can also say Splunk is an search engine for collecting, indexing, analyzing, and visualization of the data. So what do you mean by the collecting of the data? Collecting of the data in the sense we can collect data from any sources. We can get the data from any sources. And then data can be indexed. So uh, any source in a sense we can get the data from syslog, we can get the data from uh, network port, we can get data from RFID, we can get the data from any format. And the best part of Splunk is Splunk can also handle unstructured data. So regardless of the format of the data, it can do anything, right? It can do anything. Now, what about indexing? Indexing does mean after getting the data, it stores the data within itself. So the main feature of Splunk is Splunk does not use any database to store this data. Splunk does not use any external storage to use this data, to store this data. So there's a concept of indexing which uh, we will come to know later in the slide. And then analyzing. So after storing the data in index, there are certain commands in Splunk with the help of which we analyze the data. Analyzing the data in the sense we form or we take out the information out of the raw logs. Let's say you have lot many data in, uh, in your computer, but not all the data are important, right? So analyzing the data in the sense writing the efficient query to get the information out of your raw log. And then visualization. Visualization in the sense, you know, if you want to have a complete overview or complete trend graph in Splunk, you want to visualize a graph in front of your uh, higher management, right? So to visualize data in such a manner to your higher management, you need to have a Splunk graph. So what Splunk does, it collects the data from different sources, it stores it within itself it, and th with the help of command we analyze the data which are the data are important those are known as information and then we visualize it in the form of dashboards in the graph to our higher management to make it more visible to make it more uh, efficient right so that is all about Splunk Splunk does all these four stuff and nothing else so Splunk is very much specialized and has been proved as an efficient tool for collecting, indexing, analyzing, and visualization. Now, the benefit of Splunk, I have already talked a lot about all these four features of Splunk, so one by one you'll be getting the same in all the slides rather. So better understanding of your environment to drive decisions, search and visualizations tool, analyze data, I have already discussed about it, and automated reporting. So a reporting in the sense, if I want to make a certain report, Let's say I am getting a data, syslog data, or I am getting a network data, and if I am asked to find out that how many failures happened in the network, how many servers have got down because of you know some heating problem or the servers crashed, and how do I get that one? If I have thousands of servers in my infrastructure, it's not possible to count with the help of my finger, right? Mm -hmm. So in Splunk, it is very easy, we will just go and write fail 
and we'll make use of some regular expression to get all those servers which have failed because of the server crash. And then we will put that information in a dashboard in the form of a report. So that is a reporting. So my managers are in the higher, higher management will not, you know, they are not much concerned about the raw data, they are not much concerned about the query you are using. They are always much concerned about, okay, what kind of data we have. Out of 1,000 servers, we have five failure yesterday. So why is that? So because of that, we always go for the automated reporting. And how do we do that? We'll come to know in our later part of the session. Okay. Now, search and analysis engine. As I've already told you, Google likes search of your log data. Now, what you have got from this, like Google is a search engine for all the data in this world, but Splunk is acting as a search engine only for the IT data. Okay, now this slides will explain you the version of Splunk. Splunk is a licensed version software or an application you can say rather, but we can also download the enterprise free trial version from the internet which is valid only for 60 days and it has some limitation. You can index data, indexing data in the sense you can store the data in Splunk only 500 MB data per day. If you want to store off you or if you have stored more than 500 MB data by a mistake you will get a warning from Splunk, you will get a warning from Splunk that it cannot be done and if you cross as three warning then your Splunk will be stopped there itself. So once 60 days are over, you will be asked by Splunk itself to buy a license or to make it a trial version. So there are basic differences between enterprise trial version and trial version and the full version like the license version. In enterprise trial version and the full license version, there's the only basic difference is in the enterprise trial version we can have 500 MB data per day, that's it and all the features are similar to the license trial version. But the trial version has some limitation. It does not give user control. It does not give, you know, uh, there will be no option for creating the users. You cannot uh, schedule the searches. You cannot make the alert. You cannot uh, do reporting properly and a lot of stuffs are there. So people don't go for the trial version, they always go for this license version if it is really needed in the organization or they go with this uh, 60 days enterprise trial version, right? Yeah. So uh, OS supported, so there's, a one, there's one more feature of Splunk which is very beautiful and uh, you know is awesome that it is a cross-platform software. It can be installed and it can be worked on uh, many operating systems like Windows, Linux, Solaris, OS X, FreeBSD, AIX, HP UX. So it's a plus, so all in all it's a cross-platform application. So it is not like that, it is only applicable for Windows or Linux or something like that. So it can be used anywhere. It depends on your OS, whichever you are using. Now what does Splunk do? As I already told you, it can collect the data from different sources. So if I don't have much example of different sources, you can see from the slide itself, server metrics, it can take the data from window registry, server logs. In Linux, we have a lot of logs depending upon the application running in our server. Let's say slash var slash log slash messages file, which will keep you updating about each an activity happens on the system, on the server, you can say and you have mail logs, then you have syslog, then you have RAS VPN, so a lot of data are there. So whichever you want to monitor, you can just give the input to the Splunk. Splunk will check the data, it will index, and then you can run your own query to, to just monitor the logs, you know. Why we monitor the logs? Because we, if you want to see any vulnerable thing happening in the system, that has to be monitored, but it's not possible to write a script in Unix, write a script in Python or Perl or Ruby or some any other languages to monitor the logs because logs are growing day by day, right, much bigger. 
So it is not possible with the scripting languages to handle all those logs. Before Splunk has been introduced to the market, uh, people used to write small, small scripts to handle those big log, those big log. But you know, the management wants a reason for the failure now, but they used to give after two days or after three days the reason. So SLA were being breached. So because of that, Splunk has been introduced in the market, and now if you want to get the reason for any of the failure, you can get it in fraction of a second with the help of Splunk. So that is a Splunk all about, and that's why it is still in the market and very demanding in the market. So it can take the data from vulnerable, vulnerability data. It can take the data from scripts. It can collect the data from any application logs, email logs, database logs, virtual logs, whatever the sources you can see on the slides, it can take the data even. I have not put all the sources in the slides, otherwise you could not have seen anything in the slides, only sources and all. So what does Splunk provide? Splunk provides you a platform to make your own search, to search for a particular information out of the raw log. So that's why the first point is search. The second one is alert. Let's say in the midnight, I will give you a very good example of alerting. In the midnight, 12 o'clock or let's say 1 o'clock, you are sleeping and you are the only one who is taking care of the whole infrastructure or you know, the server uh, in your organization and suddenly something gets failed and you are not notified, then what will you do? In the morning when you go to the office, then it is too late, right? Because a lot of customers are affected already. So what Splunk does? If you configure Splunk in such a way so that whenever the failure happens in any of your server in the infrastructure, you will get notified. So that is known as alerting. So you can get an alert through SMS, you can get an alert through mail. If let's say you are using an Outlook, so you can configure Outlook in your cell and suddenly you will get a mail in the late night that okay, this thing happened. And then if you are awake, then you can take some decision, you can go to your office or you can log in from remote location to the system and you can uh, solve the stuff, right? So that is known as alerting. Now reporting, I have already told you about reporting. Just with the help of a uh, few queries, you, uh, you know, arrange the information in the form of table, in the form of chart. That is known as reporting when you uh, perform all this stuff and shows the thing to your higher management in the form of a dashboard. Now the fourth one is share. So whatever the dashboard you are performing, whatever the you know, query you are writing, if you want to share with another colleague of you in the organization, you can easily do that. So Splunk has this capability. Let's say you have, I'll give a very good example of this share. Let's say you have written a very, very big query, which is not possible to dictate, which is not possible to tell your friends. Let's say somebody else is working on Splunk from other side. He is a colleague and he wants to search what you have written for making a report. So it is not possible to you know, tell him each and every line from the search. And what will you do? You will go for the share, like this feature is there in the Splunk itself, you go with the share and you will just provide him the link. The moment he clicks on that link, he can see the query which, is, you know, which you have written. So he can easily download the query from that link itself. So you are sharing your query, you are sharing your report with him so that that will be also visible to him and he can also work on uh, those queries or report with you, yeah. So uh, again the same thing, data sources. So here we have a brief data sources, log files. So what do you know the log files or the registry event log file system and sys internals. Log files are the files which are uh, being generated automatically in any OS. So this is all about the first column describes about Windows. In Windows, we do have registry event logs which are uh, getting generated automatically. Then uh, configuration file, then virtualizations, any application. If you have installed any application, JMS application, Weblox application. So we know that if we find any problem in any running application, then how do we, if we have installed any application in, in server, then application generates a log and that log has to be put somewhere else to analyze it further, right? If suddenly application goes down or application is failing for some reason, so we are not able to find out for which reason the application fails. 
let's say the application has been running for quite a long time and suddenly yesterday or day, day before yesterday something fails and we came to know about that after two hours of the failure then customer will be affected and the whole business will be affected so at the time of failing we should be notified with the help of alerting which Splunk does and the moment we get the alert we'll go to the application we, we, we cannot go to the application right because application logs are already in Splunk so we'll go to the Splunk and we'll check about the failure because of what reason the failure has happened and then accordingly we'll check the step to get everything done and then we can also take the data from database let's say before introducing Splunk in your organization you used to store your data in the database let's say Oracle, Sybase, MySQL, DB2 or something else and this was a legacy system so you used to install uh, you used to uh, store your data in the database and after a few days you have installed Splunk now you have to make a report which has already been stored in the database and how will you do that so Splunk can also check the data from any of the databases with the help of some external application and once the data from the database goes to Splunk you can make your own search you can make your own query to make the report to be visible in front of the hire management. Now Splunk can also take the data from networking, syslog, SNMP, Netflow, so we all know about that, like we have already talked about it earlier. Sorry. Now delivering operational intelligence, so three primary capabilities we do have for Splunk, search, navigate, data drill down, needle in a haystack, as I told you that needle in a haystack, if we have a lot of, lot of data coming in every day, voluminous data, actually Splunk is also known as a big data tool. So what is big data? Big data is, it is a self-explanatory, the data which is big. And it depends on three Vs, variety, velocity, and voluminous. So data is growing day by day. Every day data is growing and not from tomorrow uh, and not from yesterday or day for yesterday. Data has been growing since long time the data has started, right? So data is growing day by day, but we did not have you know efficient tool to handle the data. So if, if there is a needle and if it is lost in a haystack, then how do you find that? It's not possible, right? If you don't have any automated process with you all the time. So the same thing is being done by Splunk you have a lot of, lot of raw logs, lot of raw logs and out of that if something happens and if I ask you to find what happens in a fraction of a second you can only do this if Splunk is installed in your server and that's it, right? So it also uses to find out the root cause analysis, troubleshooting and incident investigation as I've already told you. Now real-time visibility it also shows you the live dashboards, even correlation. It can easily correlate the data between two sources. Let's say the data is coming from syslog, the data is coming from var slash var slash log slash messages, and it can correlate the data between two sources, and it can does it stuff. SLA tracking, it can, main feature of Splunk is it can be integrated with any tool in the market available. It can be integrated through Nigerios, it can be integrated through HP OpenView, it can be integrated through whatever you say, like uh, whichever the tool is in your mind, it can be integrated to all the tools to get the data in, right? Now historical analytics, so it also helps in doing the trend graph. Let's say for the business analysis, if I want to see the data from January to December, I want to see the data, okay, for which month my uh, selling was higher for which month my selling was lower and if it is lower then because of what reason it was lower because of the manu manufacturing defect or because I had very less number of employees in the organization so like that if you want to have a clear understanding if you want to look upon the historical analytics you can easily do this with the help of Splunk. 